Okay, so here it is. Uh, we've talked about it for a while, or at least I've, I've talked about it for a while on this channel, that um, the interview of the writer, the director, the writer slash director of the up-and-coming Mandela Effect movie, um, David Guy Levy, I was able to interview him tonight over the phone. And, um, you know, thinking back now on the interview... I um I think we got to some really good points and some of the points that we talk about in it is uh the the friction between the two characters of Brendan and Matt and the, the the friction between the two characters that we're talking about I realized you know unless you go to the IMDb page or unless you're able to see the movie because I was able to see the movie beforehand so I could talk more coherently about it. The friction that we're talking about in the interview is the is basically point counterpoint. You know, uh, Brendan is the point, and the counterpoint character is Matt in the movie, and that's something that I wanted to bring up before you hear before you hear the interview. But um, you know, soon enough, you hopefully will go out and see the movie. Because as you'll see in the upcoming interview here that I I was pleased with it. I was pleased with the portrayal. I was p pleased with the um, the technical side of it. And I was particularly pleased you'll, you'll, you'll come to find out that they didn't have a technical person in terms of scientists or, or experts in the quantum fields or any, anything like that. That this was um, really a true independent film. It wasn't from some major studio with, you know, a, a blockbuster amount of money to deal with. And they were shooting it in their houses. And, you know, just things like that makes the, fo the film more endearing. Because once you see it, you're going to, you know, you'll be surprised with the all of those things that we all talk about and we go through. In terms of the, the emotional part of it, the research part of it. And finally, we get to... Probably the most downplayed part of the Mandela Effect experience is trauma. And I, I've made no bones about the trauma that I faced around 2016. And, you know, what happened afterwards, you know, when I discovered the Mandela Effect. And we got into that towards the end of the interview. And lastly, before I turn it over to you, um, uh, remember this was a phone conversation, so some of it isn't always so clear. I cleaned it up the best I could, but again, I hope that everyone, you know, this may abate some, some, you know, some kind of uh, conspiracies about it being a setup. It was nothing like that. I simply... I asked and, and I was able to, to view and, and talk to the director and that was it. There's no conspiracy about it. There's no nothing there. And, um, and you're going to see where this channel very much, I, as much as I pride the amount of research we do and the way in which that we perform our speculation on that particular research, we're still very much just like um, we're a low budget garage band. Uh, YouTube channel. We, we, we ourselves, we have a shoestring to no budget whatsoever. So saying that, not having our own sort of sound people and, and all of those other things, it was a conversation between two people who were very, very interested in the Mandela effect. So I hope that you get a lot out of this um, as much as I did. And ultimately, I hope you go and see the movie not that I'm promoting it for the sake of promoting it. What I what I want is for you to see it and, and for all of us to be able to talk about it and get some ideas from it. And to know one thing, that this is a, an important moment for the community. This is a benchmark, you know. This isn't something that's making fun of us. This isn't something that's, that's, that's calling us crazy or kooks or anything like that. So, um... Like I said, like I said in the beginning of it, I was very, very relieved being able to see the film. And um, for Emmys that are out there that are very serious, when you see it, you too will be hopefully be relieved as well. So uh, before I take up any more of your time, here is the interview. Hey, Sean. Hey, David. How are you? Good, good. It's nice that you can make this work out. I'm pleased to be here now. 
Excellent, excellent. I'm, I'm so, I'm really happy to have you. And, um, you know, I just, uh, I just watched the movie and I have to say I'm, I'm really impressed and I'm very, I'm very happy and, and very relieved too, um, at the way the no, man. Well, that's really, it's because the audience I care most about is that there's nothing us, you know, you and me. <laughs> so, uh, the fact that you actually have brought it out. Oh, excellent, excellent. So, um, I have to ask you, you know, with the movie, the way it's portrayed and everything, um, uh, what how, what are your feelings on the Mandela effect now that you've completed the project? Um, it's become very meaningful, I would say. You know, the what started out as just a very compelling interest, and it has become the last few years of my life. And uh, so, my feelings are. Uh, like almost like it's a kid, you know. And even though the movie's done and the kid's gonna live his own life now, it's gonna be something I'm always proud of and, and look forward to. But it's also the fact that I'll always look back at you, you know. Absolutely, I, I totally, I can totally sympathize with that. Um, w- one of the things that most impressed me about the the, the film was the amount of um, accuracy in the portrayal of the Mandela effect in, in terms of the research and in terms, in terms of how it's, um, it was put together on the film, not just the research alone, but the, the relationship, uh, between Matt and, uh, Brendan and the back and forth. That was a great way to kind of get the point counterpoint across. And, um, I was just thinking, you know, um, is that is that what you were trying to do? Because that's what certainly it, it came across for me. Well, I mean, like every character has a purpose in this one, right? Uh, uh, and and that's the benefit of making a low budget and really you cut all the fat away and you just keep what's necessary. And you have a point to make and you don't want to make your time to make it. And I would say that characters. There are people we need to be to and, and that's how it came to the subject matter of the gangway and then went down a very similar rabbit hole. Uh, I would say, uh, you know, it's all this, all this, this stuff that Brendan looks into was what I looked into, you know, and, and probably what he looked into. And so I think, that, you know, when people see him looking into you know, quantum entanglement, simulation hypothesis, and I don't think we actually got to really show I'm looking at the Schrodinger's cat, but that's, you know, that's part of quantum entanglement and, and all these things that as you start to try to explain what might be causing the Mandela effect and really understand the force behind it, you really start to, you start to want to read up on all those things and, and there's ideas in physics that will just shake your whole, the whole way you look at the world, you know. And so that's what he does and then, you know, I would have conversations with people who just weren't interested. And they were sort of represented by Matt. And it's not that they didn't like to hear what I was saying, but you know, they would uh, be the skeptics. Just the, the person who would try to tell you, "Why don't you look at it this way?" And it's like, well, I have no interest in looking at it that way, Matt. I'm definitely, you know, and I, I can't figure out what's going on here. So yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. I think. Um that was a great kind of embodiment of, of that kind of friction that you might get inside of the Emmy community. And, uh, particularly for, for, um, you know, and I think the, the, um, the couching of the idea of taking the individual and saying that it's, you know, uh, you have a, a bad memory versus, you know, you have a mass amount of people, tens of thousands, I think it was mentioned in the movie, perhaps that have the same kind of memory. So, and then once you start to get into the science, which you did very well in the movie, I thought, um, kind of just, just touch showing on different parts of the science that, that could potentially back up an idea as seemingly as out, outlandish as this. Um, I have to ask you though, how deep of a dive did you, did you go in terms of, was you, did you have any kind of technical direction or, or was it any, anything like that specifically? Well, we didn't have like a consultant, like a like a physicist consultant. Um, we just had what we were learning and the story we wanted to tell. So, you know, uh, as filmmakers, you know, who were doing this before, we even were aware of what the subject matter was. You know, you have 
ways to tell stories and how you want to approach them or what you're trying, what kind of message you're trying to convey. And then we have what we're interested in. And, um, and so, you know, it just, it was just our interest that was driving our education into the ideas we were coming across. And, um, what's interesting about this film as opposed to like any other story that might be just more fiction based, which this is still fiction, but I mean, like, you know, you have like a lot of big high concept movies that are all imagination that are just, you know, made up. And, and so you come across the Mandela effect and there's all this, this, this science that you can go look at that maybe backs up simulation hypothesis or, uh, theories on parallel, uh, worlds. Um, you know, it's where you get to actually back up your ideas with actual science. So what made it really interesting to me was, was, was finding a way to tell a story and then ground it and all these ideas that are out there outside of the movie, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes it even more uh, impressive that you know you 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 and your crew did did the kind of the, the deep dive yourselves and really immersed yourself in the culture and you it really comes across as authentic and I think um, you know I I I have a I have an audience on YouTube and and other other platforms as well that was one of the things they were worried about and I think. Um, I can say with, you know, a fair amount of authority with the amount of research that I've I've done on the Mandela effect, the gateway process, other FOIA documents of, from the alphabet, you know, CIA, DA, you know, the DOD and, uh, you know, other organizations as well as conventional universities that I think the representation that you did was really well. And then, as you mentioned, as a filmmaker, you, you, the, the way you wove it was, um, was perfect, and um, and I I really admired that, and kind of you know not just going full on Mandela Mandela Mandela. I'm also just interested in movies. I love movies, and I love sci-fi. I love horror. I love that whole kind of corner there on that. For you, when you were approaching approaching something like this, you know, did you did you and you had mentioned that something like this kind of gave you a, a you know these are my words, not yours. But kind of a bonus that there is some science behind that. Did you find that um, this kind of movie, making this kind of movie, was a um, was a um, a more um, you had more more to you had? Did you find yourself more constrained because of the the facts that were already out there, or did you find your your creativity kind of blossom as a filmmaker because there was uh, th- these kinds of facts out there? Oh, yeah. Oh, blossom because you know you get. But what is interesting is the facts that are out there um, aren't a handicap. Like there's so much information to back up these ideas that you know you almost don't have room for all of it. <laughs> so you know you try to see what ideas might support the moments you're in in the movie, and you know. But then I, mean, I could have gone down a whole other rabbit hole with quantum entanglement and and sort of this cat. It really made this a four hour movie, but then it would have been like kind of a boring movie, you know. But what I was, I'm happy with is that there's so much to play with that it didn't hinder me. It led me to new story points. It led me to hit the character's journey that he might actually find in, in, in you know, reality if he was real, you know. And, uh, as I did. And, uh, and what I really am glad about is when I look at this movie, I think it's not just a movie and people will, you know, watch it and then go talk about the movie. I think it's a movie where people will watch it and then go talk about the ideas behind the movie and and have their own, you know, conversations not about the story, but about the ideas in the story. Um, and I'm really relieved that, you know, that, you, that you responded to it because, you know, I, I'm someone who, you know, is on the internet, uh, you know, and, and looks at these things and, and has these ideas and and looks at what people's opinions are on all these ideas. And I know as the trailer came out, and people even just used you know, the fact that there was a lot of people who were very sensitive to that. And the last thing I wanted was anyone to think, oh, uh, someone's out here to make us look bad, and some of the elite was trying to like put people in their place. And, and it's just like, you know, it's just there's people who who are just as interested in it who want to you know share that interest. And now as 
few people have seen it. There's a screening last month that happened, and now we're showing it to you guys. You know, it's, it's sort of a relief, but no one feels like, you know, they're being gaslighted. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm really happy you know, that we can all talk about these ideas and yeah, I'm go over them and, and just be excited by them. Yeah, yeah. Again, you know, yeah, I think you um you said that pretty well. I um yeah, I, I think it's very important for particularly a um a film like this where a lot of people put a lot of time and a lot of research into it that, you know, the fears their fears I believe will be abated. Um and I'm I'm probably I'm I'm a bit biased in that I'm a I'm I'm a I'm a film fan. However, um, I too am very much a skeptic, and there have been a lot of things that have been thrown my way uh, that I wouldn't allow on the channel. There's been a lot of uh, information that have been thrown my way that I just I wouldn't put up on Twitter or anything like that. So um, I don't feel as if you were trying to force a narrative down anyone's throat. I don't feel as if you were taking one side over the other. I think um, it, it has a bit of everything for everyone. And I think um, I think if you're going in for just the entertainment value, then fine, you can get that out of it. I think if you're going in it as an ME and someone who who actually cares about the effect, I think you're going to get something out of it as well. And I think um, I my hope is that it's received within the community as a uh, as a positive thing. So I think um, you've really threaded the needle, and um, you know, so I, I you know it was it was definitely like that that. That threading the needle is what it was because you know the other thing is we wrote this and we had the script that we were really happy with you know and this this is a movie we just have to make we just have to make it and then they were like two groups of people I was one of the one of the bitches like let's just go make it let's just go do it our way and and make this story and then there were people like this is a really good script let's go show it around town set it up and maybe get you know get more dollars even though I don't really know how we. You want it to be that, then you're like, well, yeah, where are we going to take it? But the idea of making it with a studio, if we had, this would not be the same movie. This would be a movie that a lot of people want to water down because uh, it's, it's dense. You know, there's a lot of things in it. And even though it's a small budget, low budget sci fi, uh, it gets to explore big ideas in a way that, you know, a corporate uh, product wouldn't. And, and so I think it was important that we made it this way, you know. Absolutely, I know. And I think um, what's most important, and I think in my research, you know, I think a lot of people have this idea about Hollywood in the same way they have the idea about the government. And whenever I did my research, um, one thing I noticed, wow. one thing I noticed yeah, about... Yeah. I'm, I'm aware of that. Oh, yeah. You, right? You get it. You get it. One thing I learned about the government is <laughs> there is there is no government, like, quote, in government. There's a lot of you know, disparate factions that have their own um, agendas and they want to advance their own thing, which is natural and normal. And, you know, learning about, you know, what just the way you're talking about, you know, the, the way the film was made, I'm, I'm starting to see that there is no ubiquitous, you know, quote unquote Hollywood. It's just this, um, it seems like there are just different factions and pockets and it's like anything else. And, and that's kind of relieving as well. And I like the idea that you, you went this independent route, and I think the um, the whole independent thing, you know, people are really starving for stuff like this, you know, original ideas, particularly based in something really real. When I hear something, you know, is based in something that people have talked about or people are interested in, I'm automatically drawn to it, particularly in this genre. So I'm really happy that you did this, and I'm I'm really happy that you did it the way that you did. And, um, you know, I think you're pretty talented, so, you know, what a, for, for whatever that's worth. <laughs> uh, no, it's worth a lot, sure. Um, thank you. I mean, it's been, it's been three years since we started it, and, and there's been times when I'm, you know, when you're not doing it with the backing of a big company, you're just doing it, you know, out of your house, and we shot the, 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 the main characters, uh, home was, my writing partner, producing partner, so, you know, like, you're literally just putting it together. Um, when you're done with it, you, you know, as a filmmaker, you might hear this if you talk to a lot of people who work in this medium. No one can ever really tell if they made a movie, a good movie or not, but they just look at it and they just see light bouncing on a screen. You just can't tell. 
because it's been your you know just your eyes glaze, glaze over, and so I've been really curious to see what people would think, and it's, it's it's very uh it's very nice to hear that you said that. Yeah, it's um the, the the ability to you know like I said condense the real information and then weave it in a coherent story and then to you know to distill the two ideas the the opposition and the pro inside these characters and I oh another thing I want to get in there that I don't know did you do the research on you know a lot of MEs and people in the Mandela effect community trauma is a sometimes or an, an, or an NDE, a near-death experience, is sort of core, it's a precursor uh, to a fair amount of the population of folks who experience or believe in the Mandela effect. And I was just curious, you know, that seems to be something that's in the trailer, so I'm not giving anything away. Um, you know, things like that, was that something... No, it was important. It wasn't... No, please. It was, it was definitely something. It was important. I was, I was going through a very traumatic time in my life, um, and not just in my personal life, but also in our shared public lives. You know, 2016, uh, I think a lot of things, a lot of systems that we were used to, including the political system, were being, you know, turned over, and I think a lot uh, of that, at the same time as uh, in my personal life, um, you know, I had a very traumatic uh, experience uh, that sort of shattered my ego and, and made me really question my own reality. At, and that was all the same time that I came across the Mandela Effect. And uh, coincidentally, as I was, before I came across the Mandela Effect, like the same month, I was reading about simulation hypothesis. So the trauma of all those things and the, uh, then the information I was being shown about the effects and about simulation hypothesis, that they all just came together and clicked like a triforce, you know, and uh, it was a sort of, it, it kind of wrote itself from that up because I had that emotional connection to, you know, why someone might care, and uh, it just led, that's where it led to. So I think you're going to hear that a lot of people uh, who come across the effect are going through traumatic stuff as well, because that's exactly, I think, what, what drew me to all that, you know. That's really amazing you mentioned 2016 because I, I myself found Emmy in uh, 2016 and I, it was a pretty traumatic year for myself as well. Um, you know, in, in many different ways, you know, so that's, that's very interesting to me. And, um, it seems to be. And the, the film is, the film is actually, the film is not, even though we don't have a date card on the movie or not even in the script, you know, the film, to me, it takes place in 2016. It, even like the phone he uses, I made sure he wasn't holding a phone that was produced after 2016. You know, like, these are these little things that it's like, this is the moment of, it's when I was awakened to it and, 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 you know, from talking and, and to people, uh, 2016 is a year that a lot of people have a, a little flag next to, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's, that was, that's really amazing to me personally. And to a lot of folks that I have a that I have a connection with online, and that come back to the channel and talk to me on Twitter over and over again. So I know we're running uh, we're running down on time here. So um, is there any just you know last thing you want to leave you know with uh, you know the folks in in, in Miami community? Um. Yeah, I would just say. I mean, I was saying this to someone earlier, and I think it bears repeating, uh, you know, a lot of these things, especially if we're coming to this from a place of trauma, uh, a lot of these things can maybe make us ask questions that uh, can lead us down the wrong path, uh, such as, like, why should we care then? Why should anything feel like it's of importance? And I think uh, what I would impart would be that even though we might feel like the realities are unstable at times, um, let's not forget that we still get the gift of being here and, and you know, that we get to feel and experience these things uh, uh, is a great thing. Yeah, yeah, that's... That's, that's it, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. <clears throat> that's a great way. I think that's a great way to, to kind of to, to, to kind of end this. And... Um, 
again, uh, great job. And I, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me and to talk to uh, the crew here. So thank you very much. Oh, Sean, thank you. I'm really, I'm just happy to, 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 that you're interested and I'm happy to do it. Excellent, excellent. All right, well, everybody, I'd like, you know, for everybody to go out there. When the movie's out, go see it. That's it.